हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द कोर्स करंट रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर कंडक्टिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल इन इंडिया दिस इज लेक्चर नाइन होप यू हैव एंजॉयड अर्लियर लेक्चर्स दिस इज लेक्चर रिगार्डिंग शेड्यूल वाई एंड इट्स अपेंडाइसिस सो वट विल वी लर्न इन लेक्चर नाइन शेड्यूल वाई वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन सो दिस विल ऑल्सो सी हियर देन अपेंडाइसिस फ्रॉम Appendix one to Appendix twelve. So let us start directly to the appendices of Schedule Y. Appendix one is uh, data to be submitted along with application to conduct clinical trial for import manufacture of new drug for marketing in the country. So all these things which is required to be given. while submitting the application for clinical trial for the new drug to be imported or manufactured is given in this schedule then appendix 1a data required to be submitted by an applicant for grant of permission to import and or manufacture a new drug already approved in the country this is for the appendix which is for the drug which is already approved then appendix 1b is regarding the data required to be submitted by an applicant for grant of permission to import and or manufacture conduct of clinical trial with phytopharmaceutical drug this has been introduced in 2015 appendix 2 structure content and format for clinical study reports so this is for the clinical study report then appendix 3 animal pharmacology animal toxicology appendix 4 animal pharmacology appendix 5 informed consent appendix 6 regarding fixed dosage combination then appendix 7 is undertaking by the investigator so these are the appendix uh, from 7 to the 11 that were added after 2005 Appendix eight is related to the ethics committee. Appendix nine is stability testing of new drugs. Appendix ten is content of the proposed protocol for conducting clinical trial. Appendix eleven data element for reporting SAE that is serious adverse events occurring in the clinical trial. And the last one, appendix twelve, it is related to the compensation in case of death or injury. of a clinical trial subject rule 122 dab also added in this uh, 2013 year so let us start in detail for the appendix 1 so as we have seen the appendix 1 is data to be submitted along with the application to conduct clinical trial for import manufacture of new drugs for marketing in the country it means if the drug is new drug and somebody would like to import this new drug then they have to conduct a clinical trial similarly if it is for the manufacturing of new drug they have to apply for the clinical trial and after the permission they can import or they can manufacture so what are the requirement so applicant must have to submit the following that is introduction then chemical and pharmaceutical information about the drug like its chemical structure molecular weight molecular formula identification generic name all this regarding chemical and pharmaceutical information then preclinical it consist of animal pharmacology that is related to the safety in animal then animal toxicology related to the toxicity then clinical that is a phase in human being human clinical pharmacology that is phase 1 then therapeutic exploratory trial phase 2 therapeutic confirmatory trial phase 3 then special studies if required like uh, dissolution studies bioavailability studies bioequivalence studies then uh, regulatory status in other countries whether the drug has been approved in regulatory countries or any other countries whether that has been 
withdrawn or whether it is prohibited in some countries or it is suspended then prescribing information regarding the package insert and indication all this information required to submit samples and testing protocol this is also required to submit appendix 1a it is data required to be submitted by an applicant for grant of permission to import and or manufacture a new drug already approved in the country it is also same for the import and manufacture of new drug provided that the drug is approved in the country and somebody would like to manufacture this new drug with new dosage form or strength indication means is if the drug is already approved and subsequently the applicant has applied same or different then what are the data required to be submitted that is given in the appendix 1a so again introduction then brief description of the drug and the therapeutic class to which it belongs chemical and pharmaceutical information then marketing information special studies conducted with the approval of licensing authority so in the in this uh, appendix the preclinical data is not there now let us see appendix 1b this has been added lately in 2015 and this is regarding the phytopharmaceutical drug data required to be submitted along with the application to conduct clinical trial or import and or manufacture a phytopharmaceutical drug actually this appendix 1b it has been divided in two part part 1 consists of data to be submitted by the applicant wherein a brief description of phytopharmaceutical drug like its botanical name route of administration dosage therapeutic class indication claim then information on the plant product published literature if any available scientific report then its a side effect content diction method or method any reported manufacturing process all this to be submitted then human or clinical pharmacological information published scientific reports monograph if any available then part 2 consists of data generated by the applicant in this also identification of the plant then authentication and source of plant used for extraction and fractionation process of extraction and subsequent fractionation and purification formulation of phytopharmaceutical drug applied for then its uh, manufacturing process of the formula then stability data then safety and pharmacological information human studies as we have seen in the uh, uh, new drug then confirmatory clinical trial regulatory status that is whether it is approved in any other countries or not then marketing information post marketing surveillance report if any now coming to the next slide that is appendix 2 it is a structure content and format for clinical study report so after completion of the study the report has to be submitted to the licensing authority for its verification and the content and format is given in this appendix 2 so according to this appendix 2 what should be the content so first the title page should be there then study synopsis should be there consists of one to two pages briefing about the all the studies then statement of compliance with the guidelines for clinical trial on pharmaceutical product in india then whatever the abbreviation for example bab bioavailability bioequivalent ct clinical trial whatever the abbreviations use the meaning of that abbreviation and definitions table of contents any is table of content regarding statistical evaluation and other that also has to be given ethics committee the committee which has reviewed and accorded approval the name of the ethics committee and detail about the ethics committee then study team those who are involved in the conduct of the clinical trial detail about them then introduction and study objective so primary objective secondary objective with what purpose the study has been conducted that has to be given then investigational plan trial subject the number of subject used and, and their details has to be given 
then the procedure applied for the efficacy evaluation safety evaluation discussion and overall conclusion so after completion of the study the discussion conducted by the study team and what is their inference or conclusion that also has to be given then list of references which are used during the study and the appendices that has to be given appendix 3 is animal toxicology that is a preclinical study non clinical toxicity studies so in this studies the general principles that is systemic toxic toxicity studies male fertility study female reproduction and developmental toxicity study local toxicity allergenicity hypersensitivity then genotoxicity carcinogenicity animal toxicity requirement for clinical trial and marketing of new drug number of animals required for repeated dose toxicity uh, study all this is given here the number of animal the number of animal species so that is also mentioned here then laboratory parameters to be included in toxicity study so which are the parameter you know, while conducting preclinical study to be considered that have been also given the animal studies to be conducted in an accredited laboratory the animal study we have seen in the history that from the 2005 the glp made mandatory and again the lab should be accredited when the safety pharmacology studies are part of toxicology study this study should also be conducted in an accredited laboratory appendix 4 is animal pharmacology so this is regarding the safety of the drug in the general principle it is given the specific pharmacological actions then general pharmacological actions follow up and supplemental safety pharmacology study condition under which safety pharmacology studies are not necessary timing of safety pharmacology studies in relation to clinical development then whether the glp was there or not application of glp the animal studies be conducted in accredited laboratory we have seen it where the safety pharmacology studies are part of toxicology studies the study should also be conducted in an accredited lab appendix 5 is regarding the informed consent so actually this informed consent is also called as a informed consent documents so first is the patient information sheet the data to be provided to the patients or subject and the next is the information confirmation sheet or consent sheet where the subject has to sign so informed consent uh, let us see the checklist for study subjects informed consent document so here the essential elements are given the first is statement that the study involves research and explanation of the purpose of the research so the first and very important thing that they have to disclose that the study is only for the research purpose and not for any other purpose then expected duration of the subject's participation whatever the time is required for the study for example one week one month that has to be disclosed then description of the procedure to be followed including all invasive procedures whatever the description of the procedure what they are going to do whether it is a parenteral injections or tablet they are going to give the blood sampling procedure they have to mention description of any reasonable foreseeable risk or discomfort to the subject if any risk is there then that has to be described there description of any benefit to the subject or other reasonably expected from research if no benefit is expected subject should be made aware of this so whatever the benefit whatever the risk that has to be disclosed disclosure of specific appropriate alternative procedure or therapies available to the subject if this therapy fail then what are the other alternative measures that also has to be disclosed statement describing the extent to which confidentiality of record identifying the subjects will be maintained and who will have access to the subject medical record then trial treatment schedule and probability for random assignment to each treatment if the trial is a randomized trial then compensation and treatment available to the subject in the event of trial related injury 
so the patient has to be make make aware that he will get a compensation in case of any injury or death during the clinical trial an explanation about whom to contact for the trial related queries right of subject and in the event of any injury so in case of injury or sa to whom he has to contact the telephone number email fax number everything they have to mention the anticipated prorated payment if any to the subject for participating in the trial subject responsibility on participation in the trial so what are the responsibilities of that subject that has also mentioned statement that participation is voluntary that the subject can withdraw from the study at any time and that refusal to participate will not involve any penalty or loss of benefit to which the subject is otherwise entitled so the subjects they should have to make clear that the participation is fully voluntary there is no binding and they can withdraw at any point in the study any other permission or any other pertinent information required to be given to the subject that has to be mentioned then av recording of the informed consent procedure in case of vulnerable subject in clinical trial for new chemical entity so that also has to be mentioned that they are going to have the av recording in case of clinical trial of anti hiv and anti leprosy only audio recording is required so these are some essential elements enlisted here the purpose of research then expected duration foreseeable risk benefit alternative procedure confidentiality compensation then to whom to contact then voluntary participation subject responsibility and the icf to be in vernacular language additional element which may be required so statement of foreseeable circumstances under which the subject's participation may be terminated by investigator without the subject's consent the next is the additional cost of the subject that may result from participation in the study the consequences of subject decision to withdraw from the research and procedure for orderly termination of participation by subject then statement that the subject or his representative will be notified in a timely manner if significant new findings developed during the course of the research which may affect the subject's willingness to continue participation will be provided it means if any risk is there or the sponsor or any other pi they came to know that there is some essay occurred somewhere else then that also has to be informed during the clinical trial study a statement that the particular treatment or procedure may involve risk to the subject so the treatment if it is involving the risk that also has to be mentioned Ex- approximate number of subject enrolled in the study So this is the format of informed consent form for subject participating in a clinical trial so this is a template provided wherein the subject has to tick mark that he has read and understood the all the conditions and he is he is uh, participating voluntarily and for that he is giving the signing he has to tick mark in the box and has to give the initials for every elements given here and below you, you can see the name of participant or uh, then he has to write his name signature along with the date when he has enrolled so all the details he has to fill and give to the pi appendix 6 is related to the fixed doses combination so what is the fixed dose combination we have already seen here also it is given the fixed dose combination it refers to product containing one or more active ingredient used for particular indication this fdc actually it has been divided into four groups that is uh, when the new individually approved two product or more than two product first time it is combined then it is a fdc new fdc then if the ratio has been changed if the strength has been changed if the dosage form has been changed indication then also it it is considered as a fixed dose combination as these are these are already approved in the country 
No additional animal or human data are generally required for these FDCs and marketing permission may be granted if the FDC has an acceptable rationale. Appendix 7, it is the most important that is undertaking by the investigator. So while giving the undertaking by the investigator, these are the content the investigator should fill. Full name, address and the title of the PI that is principal in investigator. If the sites are more than sometimes the investigator are also there. So if the investigators are there, then they are detail also required to give. Name and address of the medical college, hospital or other facility where the clinical trial will be conducted. So wherever these uh, trials are conducting, the details uh, about the address of these hospitals or site has to be given. Then education, training, experience of the PI investigators involved and the other members that detail also has to be given. Name and address of all clinical laboratory facilities to be used in the study. What are the laboratories they are using for testing and analysis of the sample? The details of this laboratory has to be given. Name and address of the ethics committee. So the ethics committee which is responsible for giving the approval. Detail about that ethics committee whether it is institutional, independent, its address, composition, quorum. All the things regarding ethics committee has to be mentioned. The name of the other members of the research team as already mentioned. Protocol title and study number. So under the undertaking by investigator again here required to give the protocol title and study number that which study he is going to monitor or conduct. Then some commitments have been given that he has reviewed the clinical protocol and has agreed that it contains all the necessary information to conduct of the study and he will not begin the study prior to the approval of ethics committee and the regulatory authority. This commitment has to be signed by the principal investigator and other investigators. I agree to conduct the study in accordance with the current protocol. I will not implement any deviation from or changes of the protocol without agreement by the sponsor. So he has to give in written that he will follow the approved protocol and if any changes are then, then he will take the permission from the ethics committee and from the licensing authority. Then he has to agree to personally conduct and supervise the clinical trial at his site. The four that I agree to inform all subjects that drugs are being used for investigational purpose and I will ensure that the requirement relating to obtaining informed consent and ethics committee review and approval specified in GCP guidelines are met. That he will follow all the GCP guidelines and the research is for the research, the trial is for the research purpose that also has to mention. I agree to report to the sponsor all adverse experience that occur in the course of the investigation in accordance with the regulatory and GCP guidelines. This is regarding the adverse experience. I have read and understood the information in the investigator's brochure including the potential risk and side effect of the drug. So he has to first read all the investiga investigator's brochure and if he agree then he had to give the agreement. I agree to ensure that all associates, colleagues and employees assisting in the conduct of the study are suitably qualified, experienced and they have been informed about their obligations in meeting. This agreement also has to be signed. Then I agree to maintain adequate and accurate record and to make those record available for the audits. So the PI and investigator, it is their responsibility to maintain all the data and it, it has to be made available during the audit. Then I agree to promptly report to the ethics committee all changes in clinical trial activities. So any changes in the clinical trial activities he has to immediately inform to the inform, uh, ethics committee. I agree to inform all unexpected SAE to the sponsor as well as ethics committee within 7 days of their occurrence. I will maintain confidentiality of the identification of all participating study patient and assure 
security and confidentiality of study data study data and patients information has to be made it confidentially then i agree to comply with all other requirement guideline and statutory obligation as applicable to clinical investigator participating in clinical trial signature of investigator with date so all this commitment he has to sign with date coming to the next appendix that is appendix a it is related to the ethics committee so we have seen this in detail in our previous lecture so we'll not go in detail only we'll have the brief that at least seven members should be there then for the quorum it require the five uh, members and these members are like this that may uh, basic medical science scientist clinician legal expert and other we have seen already it in detail appendix 9 is uh, related to the stability testing of a new drug whether the drug is stable or not that has to be proven and the documented proof has to be given to provide evidence on how the quality of drug substances or formulation varies with time under the influence of various environmental factors such as temperature humidity and light the stability studies are required to establish shelf life for the formulation and recommended storage condition stability studies are also required to establish the shelf life for the formulation and recommended dosage form it should include testing of those attribute of the drug substance that are susceptible to change during storage and likely to influence quality safety and efficacy in case of formulation the testing should cover as appropriate the physical chemical biological and microbiological attribute preservative all this has to be mentioned and here it is given then the stability testing of new drug substance and formulation study condition for drug substance and formulation intended to be stored under general condition so these are the storage conditions and the stability study conditions stability testing of uh, for the new drug so for the general storage condition that is room temperature or 25 degree celsius the stability study has to be carried out for the long term and accelerated for the long term or also called the real time the study condition 30 degree celsius plus or minus 2 degree celsius with the relative humidity 65% plus or minus 5% the study has to be conducted for the duration of 12 months for accelerated it is a 40 degree celsius plus or minus 2 degree celsius with a relative humidity 75% plus or minus 5% for the 6 months if at any time during 6 months testing under the accelerated storage condition such changes occur that cause the product to fail in complying with the prescribed standard additional testing under an intermediate storage condition should be conducted and evaluated against significant changes criteria if the product are required to be stored in the refrigerator condition then this following type of the study conditions are and the duration is required for the long term it is 5 degree celsius plus or minus 3 degree celsius study required to be conducted for 12 months and for the accelerated it is 25 degree celsius plus or minus 2 degree celsius with relative humidity 60% and the duration is 6 uh, months now let us see the product to be stored in the freezer the study condition for a drug substance formulation intended to be stored in freezer so these are the conditions in this case only long term study has to be conducted minus 20 degree celsius plus or minus 5 degree celsius for 12 months drug substances intended for storage below minus 20 degree celsius shall be treated on case by case basis stability testing of the formulation after constitution or dilution if applicable should be conducted to provide information for the labeling on the preparation if the preparation is lyophilized preparation and dilution is required then 
the di after dilution how much is the stability shelf life that also has to be mentioned this testing should be performed on the constituted or diluted product through the proposed in house period coming to the next slide that is appendix 10 it is regarding content of the proposed protocol for conducting clinical trial so while applying in the form 44 we have seen that form 44 is required uh, there for the application of new drug for manufacture or for import purpose for the clinical trials or marketing in the India. So, these are the contents. First, the title page has to be given, full title of the clinical study has to be given so that from the title itself one can understand what type of study is there. Protocol study number and protocol version number with date. If it is the original protocol, then protocol number. If it has been revised, then the version number or revision protocol number. The IND name, if in case of the investigational new drug, then whatever the name, a uh, given code number that has to be mentioned. Number of the investigational drug, complete name and address of the sponsor and the CRO. So, who is the sponsor and where from he is getting done the clinical trial that is the CRO that also required to be. Number of investigators involved in the study. So, details about the number of investigator and their name, address, everything has to be given. Table of content, a complete table of content including list of all appendices. If uh, the appendices are attached then list of the all appendices the table has to be given. Study rationale, then study objective, all the objective of the study that is primary, secondary, whether it is for safety purpose, whether it is for efficacy purpose or to see the adverse reaction that study objective has to be given. Then study design like a double blinded study or open level study, randomization is there or not, crossover, all this sequence, treatment period. This should be given in the study design. Then study population, the number of subjects required to be enrolled in the study at the investigative site and by all sites along with brief description of nature of subject population required is also required to be mentioned. Subject eligibility that is inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. Those subjects which are to be included, what should be the criteria for their inclusion and what should be the criteria for the inclusion exclusion that is also has to be given. Study assessment plan, procedure and methods to be described in detail. Study conduct stating the type of study activities that would be included in this section would be medical history, type of physical examination, blood or urine testing, then ECG diagnostic testing such as pulmonary function test, symptoms measurement dispensation and retrial of medication, subject cohort assignment, AE, AE review, etc. has to be given. Then whatever the study treatment that also required to give. Then adverse event, description of expected adverse event should be given. So whatever the available knowledge for the adverse event that also has to be mentioned. Procedure used to evaluate an adverse event should be described, whatever the procedure the CRO is following as per the protocol that has to be mentioned. Ethical consideration, so the summary of the ethical consideration required to be given, like a risk benefit assessment, how they have calculated, then ethics committee review and its communication, then informed consent processes, how they, the SOP for that. The statement of subject confidentiality including ownership of data and coding procedure that they will maintain the confidentiality. What is the procedure to maintain the confidentiality that also has to be given. Study monitoring and supervision. So, how they are going to monitor the study, who will be the responsible, how they are going to supervise the study, the detailed procedure. Then investigational product management. So, whatever the product they are going to use in the study, so how they are going to store that product, what is the stability of that product, who is the responsible to dispense that product. So, whatever the management is there, they have to give. Then data analysis, undertaking by the investigator we have seen in appendix 7. So, 
undertaking by the investigator whatever whosoever uh, investigator involved they have to give the sign the undertaking then appendices provide a study synopsis copies of the informed consent document informed consent document as i have said is in two part patient information sheet the information to be conveyed to the patient and informed consent form that uh, if he agree then he has to sign crf and other data case uh, a uh, record form and other data collection form summary of relevant preclinical safety information any other document reference in the clinical protocol so here it is briefly given the content of this appendix a that is title page table of uh, comments and other things appendix 11 is the data element for reporting sae occurring in clinical trial so this is regarding the patient details suspected drugs other treatment to provide the same information for concomitant drug including non prescription drug then details of suspected a outcome details about the investigator the next is the appendix 12 compensation in case of injury or death during clinical trial so this is related to the compensation in case of the clinical trial in the case of an injury occurring to the clinical trial subject he or she shall be given free medical management as long as required in case the injury occurring to the trial subject is related to the clinical trial such subject shall also be entitled for financial compensation as per the order of the licensing authority that is a the controller general of india we also call the cla will be over and above any expense incurred on the medical management of the subject In the case of clinical trial related death of the subject his or her nominee would be entitled for financial compensation as per the order of the licensing authority defined under clause B of rule 21 and the financial compensation will be over and above any expense incurred in the medical management of the trial the financial compensation for clinical trial related injury or death could be in the form of payment for medical management then financial compensation for trial related injury financial compensation to nominees of the trial subject in case of death financial compensation for the child injured in utero because of the participation of parent in clinical trial the sponsor or his representative whosoever had obtained permission from the licensing authority for conduct of the clinical trial shall provide financial compensation if the injury or death has occurred because of any or of the following reasons the reasons are given here below adverse effect of investigational product any clinical trial procedure involved in the study then if there is a violation of the approved protocol if the protocol has been approved and the pi has not followed the conditions stipulated therein scientific misconduct of the protocol or any negligence by the sponsor or his representative or the investigator failure of investigational product to provide intended therapeutic effect use of placebo in placebo control trial if any adverse effect due to the concomitant medication if any other medication has been used and due to which the adverse effect or is say occurred but this is excluding standard care necessitated as part of approved protocol injury to the child in utero because of the participation of parent in clinical trial procedure for payment of finan- financial compensation has to be given so these are all are the appendices given in the schedule y we have seen now let us uh, have a quick challenge for you by giving the question as usual so have the first question how many appendices are there in schedule y so there are 12 appendices including appendix 1a and 1b the next question when was phytopharmaceutical drug appendix 1b introduced under schedule y so it was introduced wide gsr 918 on 30th november 2015 next question under which rule and appendix the compensation in case of injury or death during clinical trial is included so this is rule 122 dab and appendix 12 related to the compensation 
in which case av recording should be done for informed consent so the answer for this is uh, vulnerable subjects wherein av recording is required the last question what is appendix 5 this is very important appendix so the appendix 5 is related to the informed consent document let us summarize and briefly the lecture 9 so in this lecture 9 we have seen all the appendices that is appendix 1 to appendix 12 including 1a and 1b we also learn that appendices are the requirement for approval of marketing new drug subsequent new drug then fdc biological vaccine phytopharmaceutical drug we understood that appendices are to help applicant to generate data for regulatory approval so this is all about the lecture 9 and schedule y and its appendices so we'll see again in our next lecture till then bye bye and thank you